Hey there, welcome back guys. In today's video, we're going to be talking about support for the Ender 3 S1 Pro. That's right, you got a 3D print and somehow the 3D printer just can't print into thin air and which could mess up your project. So uh, in this video, we're going to help you just turn on the settings so that you could have support uh, for your 3D print. And so, you know, in the end, you'll have to peel it out of its shell, but you'll have the finished product without having any flaws or errors, uh, if that makes any sense. And why don't we just have a look and see what's printing over here um, in the printer that requires support okay come so this is what the supports look like and you just kind of have to use your best judgment uh, when deciding when to add them and when not to add them and as you can see in this particular instance you need them because his arms are are out but it's just amazing how each and every layer uh, is set to perfection uh, and the hardest part is probably going to be taking this thing apart uh, remember this is part one okay part two we're going to go over on how to um, deconstruct and disassemble the whole thing so that we can actually see if the spaceman actually printed uh, properly with his support structure because he's sort of inside of a shell as you can see but will he make it to the moon and back not sure let's find out all right, so that pretty much sums this part up on how your finished product will look. As you can see, it's finished. So you get the idea of that. Um, so now let's dive into it. Let's go into the computer and have a look and, and see what we need to do so we can get support going. Uh, so your 3D print could look just as good as that spaceman over there. So you can go to the moon and back. All right, so let's come. All right, so I'll leave a link to the project files in the description below. It's going to be the astronaut moon organizer pencil holder. Okay. Let's open it up. We're going to select the astronaut and we'll just take the file and drag it onto um, the Cura application. And we're using Cura 5.6.0. Okay, it'll load any minute, depending on the speed of your computer. And there's our spaceman. Look at that. And so we have here our different views. We have here 3D, and then we have front view, and then we have top view, and then we have left view and right view. Um, and a lot of it's a process of illumination, just using your best judgment when it comes to deciding whether or not you will need support. And I can tell that he will need support, even, even though the file didn't mention anything. Um, if I go here, right to the left view, he's right off his heels. And my bed shakes, and I know that um, during the print process, he is definitely going to fall off and tip over. So I'm like, oh no, how, what do I do? You know, I, I, it's going to take X amount of hours to print. Uh, you know, how do I um, enable the print experience so that it completes the process, right? All right, really simple. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go here, top view, right? And then just look at him from there. And don't worry about the red, right? Um, but we want to view him from the actual side right over here so we can see how everything just goes together. All right, so we click here. Um, so by default, you'll have these settings, but as soon as you turn on support, see supports right there. It says generate structures to support parts of the model which have overhangs. Without these structures, these parts would collapse during printing. So in case you're still wondering why are we, let me just shrink that out. Why are we adding um, supports? Because look at his arms. The, your printer can't print into thin air. See his elbows, right? So the, um, yes, it will print everything, but it'll be drippity drip, um, you know, depending on your printer. And the under 3S1 Pro doesn't do well printing into thin air. So that's where supports come in, okay? So we'll just go back into this particular view from that side. See that? See? I look at his arms on that side. Unless his arms were in front of him, that would be the only way. Okay, and there's the back, and then we're back to this view. All right, so now we're going to go go back to your top where it says dynamic. You could, you know, I haven't printed this guy in standard quality. If you have, let me know. Um, for this particular build, I chose dynamic. Uh, but, you know, it's all preference on what you feel is best for you. Uh, and I find out of the box, by default, the Ender S1... Ender 3 S1 Pro uh, settings in Cura are pretty good. You know, I, I have some custom settings in here, but I have I don't have not used them in a while. So anyway, so we see support, turn it on. Okay, don't worry about anything here as long as it says everywhere. And you will click slice. 
And then, you know, depending on your machine, will determine how long the process will take. Uh, for me, I think it's fair, um, somewhat slow, but still does the job. And what matters is the file it will generate that will go into your 3D printer. Okay, 15 hours, that's about right. That's how long it took. Uh, this is gonna take 87 G, see it right there? Uh, and then right here, uh, or 29 milliliters, depending on how you do the conversion. Uh, in case you're wondering, how do I know how much uh, filament it'll take? 87 Gs, if you, actually, you know what? Let's just wait a second and I'll show you. Okay, on three, two, one. So as you can see right here, the numbers go from 100 to 900 uh, grams. So you, you'll be able to tell how much filament you need, right? Or even if you wanna know if you have enough. Right, because you need right about here I have about uh, I think I have plenty enough for this particular project so you know knowing that and moving forward you can go ahead and print this um, whereas if I was a little bit lower I, I would not be able to or I, I could I could just you know pause it and load it that way and then continue on with the job but this is just to give you an idea of how to read your filament gauge okay okay now that you know how to gauge how much filament you will need. Uh, just double check and make sure you have enough because it does a lot if you're running low. Okay, now we're just gonna click select save to disk. We'll call him astronaut, right? Astronaut um, 2024. And it'll be the G code file by default and that's the format that you want for your Ender 3 S1 Pro. And you will click save of course, it saved it. See, as you can open it in the folder, uh, and everything is in alphabetical order. Just go name, whoops, name, the go three, and then astronaut 2024. It's right there. Um, and now to see the supports, like wait, wait, what are our supports? Let's just shrink that. Uh, it should let me if I click there. And now if I go to preview, okay, voila. And then just get this out of the way. And this is how it will print. Okay, it's actually printing right now. And that's this particular view. Okay, and then over here, that view, it looks like he's trapped in ice and you'll have to shovel him out. See, look at that, kind of neat. Actually, let's go have a look at the printer and see. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Kind of neat, huh? Yeah, so that's pretty much sums it up with that. And that's why you would use support on your 3D project. Um, and the rest, you know, is just the, comes down to your calibration and your bedding and, and everything else so that you can have the um, full experience and not the nightmare that comes with 3D printing. Anyway, um, pretty much sums this part up and good luck with your project. And that pretty much sums it up. I hope this video helped you in understanding on why you would use support for your 3D print and hopefully you can have a similar experience or even better with your support uh, files. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below or ideas for other videos. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.